They say all publicity is good publicity, but I'm not sure that CrowdStrike wanted quite as much publicity as they got last week. Pushing out a simple profile update, a data file update, to apparently 8.5 million Windows machines caused those machines to blue screen, to catastrophically fail. This is probably not the best thing to have happen on a Friday. Uh, it affected airlines, it affected supermarkets here, uh, it affected even our online FPOS here in New Zealand as well. Definitely a high impact uh, situation. And one of the big challenges with it is due to the nature of that failure, the blue screen, it's not just that the software failed, the entire operating system failed. Every single affected computer had to be visited in some way, manner or form. This, you couldn't automatically deploy out a replacement to this. So this was a big deal and we'll probably still hear some ripples for a while of those 8.5 million Windows machines that failed. A lot of credit to CrowdStrike themselves and particularly to the CEO, George Kurtz. He showed up on USA Today after what must have been a pretty horrific night with himself and his team working out what the heck had gone wrong and how they were going to handle it. Uh, he owned up and said it's definitely it's an issue of, of ours, it's not a cyber attack, it's not a compromise, it was an, an error. Uh, really appreciate the honesty and the directness of turning up there. Not a situation any CEO wants to be in and I think George did a really good job. What it highlighted was that there's some tension between the speed of response to new threats, and that's why this update was released. There was a new uh, attack that was using a particular functionality called named pipes that only exists on Windows machines, and that's why this fault only occurred and only, only uh, the outage only affected Windows machines, because that's the only place named pipes ex exist. CrowdStrike had released an update to specifically protect against this compromise that was under exploit and that uh, release had to be pushed out very fast in order to protect customers. And there's that tension going on then about speed of release versus safety of release. Clearly this code was not safe to release into production because it caused such a widespread outage. And that's a tension we see in a DevOps practice of that tension to get changes out rapidly against the need to fully test changes before they're released out. It's important to, to think about building those CI CD pipelines in your DevOps practices around using sufficient testing and testing that reflects what's going on in production. If during the testing of this change, uh, CrowdStrike had found that it caused blue screens on Windows machines, they would have rolled this back. They would not have released it out into production. Now that tells me that what they're using in their testing doesn't match up to what's out in customers' actual production. And that's a, a real problem for testing because you've got to test what's out in production because production is the ultimate test environment. That's where your code has to actually work. Uh, one of the mitigations that we sometimes use in an enterprise use case is a segmented deployment where you only deploy to a few machines and you wait a while and you deploy to a few more. Because from what CrowdStrike have reported, the faulty code was only available on their download server for a period of around an hour, and yet it got to eight and a half million machines. Uh, there's some challenge in there around that segmented deployment. I suspect what's gone on is that each customer has downloaded one copy of this update from the CrowdStrike servers and then proceeded to deploy it out to every machine that, that is managed within that customer. So that sort of staged deployment. And I suspect CrowdStrike don't have a way of recalling an update once it's been sent out. So that update comes off their download server, goes to the customer's staging server. Uh, what they don't appear to have, or what I suspect they don't have, is a mechanism for that staging server to be notified not to keep deploying that update. And that's kind of <laughs> would have helped here, I suspect. However, one important perspective is that although 8.5 million machines were shut down, what if 8.5 million machines had been compromised by the attack that CrowdStrike were protecting against? Maybe not 8.5 million would have been compromised, maybe a few could have been compromised in that time, but this is the, the tension that we see in security products, that arms race between attackers and our own defense systems. And so sometimes things go wrong, and because CrowdStrike is such a dominant player in this area, uh, when it goes wrong, it goes wrong very publicly. 
in your own CI CD practices, make sure that you are doing thorough testing of releases before they go out into production. Most of us don't have that speed of uh, working against threat actors, that we're really thinking about working against other businesses and being competitive, and so that speed is not quite so critical. The safety of release, fully testing packages, segmenting your deployments out, really good practices in DevOps, and it's important that we don't just focus on how many deploys per day can we get out when we're implementing DevOps. We really want to be thinking about the safety and quality of those uh, deployments. Our objective is to rapidly get the code safely into production, and without proper testing, it's not safe. I'm Alistair Cook, CTO Advisor here at the Futurum Group. Stay tuned for more CTO Dice.